Hi everyone. So this is the first time I think I've done this uh, on this channel where I am actually going to show you the books that I have cleared out of my study upstairs because I was just I, there was too many books and I would lost all free available space that was available um, that had been available when I moved in and so I was decided to have a clear out of my books and what i found is actually a real interesting mixture of books now these books some of them i'm getting rid of because i know i will just never read them again some of them i absolutely hated some of them i really enjoyed it's just a case of making room so the, getting rid of these books donating them to to charity and such is not a reflection necessarily of you know of the person's work it's just that either i didn't agree with it it didn't or it didn't agree with me um or, you know, I really enjoyed them, but am I likely to read them again? So I, I want to make space for new books. So in order to do that, there has to be sacrifices. So I wanted to show you the books that I have decided to get rid of. So I, let's see how, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Literally, they are just in the random order that I pulled them out of the bags. I've got two bags of books. Um, they're just the order that I pulled them out of bags. So let's see how we do. But I want to, this is the only series of books that are just next to me. So I want to start off with that. And that is the Game of Thrones books. I got through uh, four of these. Uh, so I got through the first book. These aren't in the correct order either because, as I said, I've just pulled them out of the books. So from top to bottom, I read the top one, Game of Thrones, then third one down, A Storm of, uh, of Swords, uh, then in the middle, Clash of Kings, and the one below that, A Storm of, Storm, uh, of Swords 2, Blood and Gold. So, yeah, they're not in the right order, but they're the four that I got through. I started watching Game of Thrones when it first aired, and I enjoyed it. So that's what led me to read the books. And I got the books because it was part of, I think it was what I got it for, I got like a load of gift cards or something for my birthday. So I went shopping and I bought those seven books and I started reading them and then I started comparing them to the fit to the tv show and I'm like oh okay they've made some changes okay and as you know I was going through the series and as it got around series three I think it was I really started to get bored of Game of Thrones tv show uh, and then it moved channels so I couldn't watch it anymore so I was like oh okay I can't watch this anymore um and then when I got my house I was able to watch all the Game of Thrones um because I had access to the Sky Channel that they were now on. Um, but it was just a bit like, with the books, I lost interest with the books as I lost interest with the TV show. And I just, yeah, even though I had the seven books, I only got through four of them. And they have been sat on my bookcase since I bought them when Series 1 first came out. And you know how long ago Series 1 came out. And they have always permanently been there. So something in the back of my mind must have been saying, you should keep these. You should read on. But I have spent so many years with them on my bookcase. And I'm thinking, you should be going to a charity shop because I am not going to be reading you anytime soon so there we go that's seven straight off the mark where i do like george r martin's writing i think he is a good writer i i like the complexity of his worlds and such it so suits a tv series which totally made sense for it to be made into a tv series it was just there was something about the storylines which I just fell out of love in love with and maybe I just fell out of love of all the all the deaths and all of the it, it, some bits were just very heavy some bits took ages to get on with and some books didn't you know the events weren't relevant until like two books down the line and I was just a bit like I got frustrated I think with the format and I needed a break so I started reading something else because I read the four books back to back and then I just didn't go back so you know, they've been sat on my bookcase for like, what, nearly 10 years now. And I'm like, I'm not going to read them. I'm not going to read them. Well, the first four, I'm not going to reread them. Um, yeah, I just, it's a no. So there we go. Kicked off this <laughs> with the first seven books of Game of Thrones. What could happen next? Okay, I'm going to now look at the hardback books oh, that I'm giving 
away. So the first one is The Wicked Boy by Kate Summerscale. I really like Kate Summerscale. Her book, Suspicions of Mr. Witcher, which is mentioned at the top, is absolutely fantastic. I reviewed The Wicked Boy um, here on this channel and I really enjoyed it, but I think the Suspicions of Ms. Mr. Witcher is a stronger book than this one. Um, and it's an interesting case, but it's a case where I'm like, yeah, I, I found the psychology and thing of, of what, what psychologically caused this boy to kill his mum with his little brother um, and the approach that uh, they took to because a child hadn't been convicted of killing a, an adult before in uh, in England before this case so uh, what approaches they took to rehabilitate him and such I found that very interesting but I'm like yeah it was interesting but am I likely to read it again probably not so The Wicker Boy is going to charity. Then Period by Emma Bartnett, which I read recently. I absolutely love this book. I thought it was brilliant. Um, I, but again, it's that thing of, am I likely, am I actually likely to read it again? I would read it again, but am I likely to? And I think passing this on to some other person, some other person who wants to read about periods and such is a good thing to do. Um, it allows somebody else to read about it um, who wouldn't have read about it before. So I, that's the thing about donating books and such and giving away to charity is that you're allowing people the opportunity to read these books when perhaps they couldn't afford to buy from as new from on, an online shop like Amazon or from like a, a, a bookshop in town like Waterstones or something like that. Um, if they can buy it from a charity shop and it allows them to learn from it at a cheaper price, then go for it, I say. So, yeah. So there we go. So I'm, I'm passing it on for somebody else to be educated uh, by Emma Bartnett's wonderful writing. Next up, it's The Binding by Bridget Collins, a book that was so absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. It was absolutely beautiful book. But the actual contents of the book, I mean, oh God, I loved the, the cover, the, the hard cover is so gorgeous. But the actual content of the book was just not working for me. I, no, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. This nearly made my top five of the worst books of the year, but it came in in the end at number six. So it didn't quite make the worst book of the year list, but yeah, I, I just couldn't find full substance from the from the from the book, and the story was just all a bit weird. Um, wonderful premise, but just didn't work for me. Then we have paperbacks, but they're in larger size. We've got The Postmistress by Sarah Blake and Maggie O'Farrell's The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox, which I read, I think, a couple of years ago now. Um, and yeah, I did enjoy these books. Um, they, were, they were pretty good. I preferred, I think, The Postmistress more than The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox. Um, but again, I'm making room and I need to figure out, am I likely to read these again? They were interesting books to read, but um, yeah, I needed to make space. That's the only reason why they're, they're going. And the last two, I have to say the exact same thing. I enjoyed them, um, but I need to make space. And they are In Byron's Wake by uh, Moore. Uh, and Titanic Voices by Hannah Holman. So these are non-fiction books. This one um, has the accounts of those who were on the Titanic and tells the stories of their lives before the Titanic and after. And In Byron's Wake uh, tells the story of Annabelle and Milbank and Ada Lovelace, who were Byron's wife and daughter, respectively. Um, and yeah, they, these were good books, but I feel like that is quite a significant amount of space on my bookcase and a significant weight on, on my floorboards. So <laughs> I liked them, but I've got to make the room. So that's those ones. Now, here's where I go into the standard paperback ones. And there's a real mixture of stuff in here. Ones that, you know, I've reviewed and I've said I've absolutely loved them and ones where I've reviewed and I didn't like them and ones which I haven't even read. Yes, they are there. And of course, it's so very obvious that my worst five 
of 2020 are going to be in this bag. I am not reading these again. Uh, and if you haven't watched it, my my uh, worst five reads of 2020 were Mary Shelley by Miranda Seymour, Perfume, The Story of a Murderer by, Pat Murderer by Patrick Suskind, Suskind, Ink by Alice Broadway, We See Everything by William Sutcliffe, and Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. All of them I had major, major issues with. Um, they they just completely lacked and the top three were young adult fiction uh number four perfume was a uh, um, modern adult fiction and mary shelley was a non non-fiction book um yeah really wasn't impressed with young adult fiction it would appear this year since uh, three of them made my worst list uh but yes so as you can imagine i'm not going to read them again so they're going so let's look at this bunch that I've got here. So I'm trying to do these sort of in bulk so because there's so many books here. Um so I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books here. Uh some of them which I read last year, some of them from before that oh no two of them I haven't actually reviewed no one of them I haven't reviewed on this channel. <laughs> Let me decide. So the first one is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I love the film The Princess Bride. I really enjoyed reading the book, but the book is quite different from the film. The majority of it is the same, but it is quite different. It's structured very, very differently than the film. And even though I enjoyed reading it and it was a good laugh and I had a good time reading it, I was just a bit like, Again, am I likely to read it in like the next year or a year or two? No, put it in the charity bag. I was that brutal with with books um, going through this year, um, my unhauling. And the same goes for the rival queens. I really loved le reading about Catherine de Medici and her daughter. Um, this is by sorry by Nancy Goldstone. Um, I really enjoy uh, Catherine de Medici. Is just like she was a crazy ass strong woman from from french history um i i found it fascinating to read about her uh and i'd watched the tv show rain who she's the main character in and yeah to have that kind of image in my mind whilst reading about what she was really like and such um it was it was a it was a really good read i found it it was fascinating to learn about french royal history because i don't read books about french royal history or other royal histories really from around the world um so yeah the rival queens i thought was a really strong pretty strong book um but am i likely to read it in the next year or two no nope, it goes then one which might sound find surprising the boy in the striped pajamas by john boyne now this this is the 10th anniversary edition the boy in the striped pajamas is such an interesting book um in that it tells the story of the holocaust through the perspective of a child something which doesn't really happen um in holocaust related books uh, either fiction or non-fiction um and so it's very smart it's very clever I enjoyed reading it it's actually i think on the 100 book bucket yes it is on the 100 book bucket list poster that I've got in my study um, and I've read it a few times and I've enjoyed reading it but I'm just a bit like am I going to read it again in the next year or two no get rid of it uh, it's a really strong book but it just yeah I'm, I'm not I'm not that fussed to to read it anytime soon so I've had to as you can see I've had to I'm probably going to say that Am I going to read it in the next year or two? I've already said it about 10 times. I'm probably going to say it another 10 times in this video. But it's what you have to do if you've got so many books like I do. You've got to get rid of them. I've got two whole bookcases dedicated to books that I wanted to keep. This is just the ones that I decided to get rid of. And then I've got that entire bookcase, which is... Um, my TB Red bookcase, and then I've got other hardback books that are scattered around other bookcases in my study. So as you can see, I've got quite a, a big book collection, and I haven't done a clear out since I got this house, which is six years ago. So I've got to be brutal. And so Boy in Striped Pajamas, I do appreciate that book. I like that book. I recommend that book, but I'm not likely going to read it in the next year or two. So it's got to go. And the same applies, you know, for these ones like Sharp Objects. 
I I really enjoy sharp objects. It was my first Gillian Flynn book that I had read. My mum had given me this. This is her copy that she gave me. Um, and I've enjoyed it. I would recommend it, but I'm not likely to read it again in the next year or two. So that's going to go. All the Bright Places, exactly the same. Enjoyable book. I read this this year. It's a pretty strong young adult fiction book. Um, but I'm not likely to read it again. It's got a very strong premise and such and covers teen suicide and uh, teen mental health and such. So it's got a really strong narrative, but just didn't. I'm not likely to read it. Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. This was a book that I really didn't get along with. Um, it's, this was, I think, number seven in my ranking of best and worst books this year. So it was one of the worst, but not the worst. Um, just missed off the, the um, five worst books of the year. And she is an amazing writer, but it, the, the premise, the story just didn't work for me. So that's why I decided to, to give away We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It might be worth me trying to reread it again, but am I likely to reread it in the next year or two? No. And then we have Neil Gaiman's The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I really didn't like this book. I love Neil Gaiman. I've got loads of Neil Gaiman books, but the Ocean at the End of the Lane was one that I just couldn't get on with. But then you're going to have that, aren't you? I'm sure, like, there's going to be a book, like J.K. Rowling. I've loved all of her books. I'm sure she's going to publish a book at some point that I'm not going to get on with. That's perfectly fine, because you can't like every single book of an author. And for Neil Gaiman, The Ocean at the End of the Lane is the one that I just couldn't get along with. So I, I, I'm, I'm definitely not going to read it. Again, it's gotta go. Right, I'm nearly there guys. I've got like one and a half piles left. <laughs> so I have got uh, like 10 books here. So let's go through them. My worst book of 2019 is there and it's The Couple Next Door. I absolutely hated this book. It was terrible. One of the worst written books I have ever read. It was written like a screenplay. It had a stupid premise and I hated the characters and the narrative and what happened. So there is no way in heck this is staying on my bookcase any longer. Um, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Now, this is an interesting book. This is a book I enjoyed. It it, it tells the story of, of people through like five different timelines and how they're linked and all this stuff. And it's probably one of the hardest books that could ever be adapted into a film, but it was made into a film. I enjoyed the film. Um, it is masterful in what he's done, what he's by telling these five linked stories. Um, but at the same time, it is it is highly complex. And even though I enjoyed it, I think Cloud Atlas is one of those books that I probably pick up once every like five or six years or something and read, not every year. And I read it last year. So <laughs> it's got to go. It's still got, I've still got like four or five years before I will pick that one up again. Oh, uh, yeah. Then we have got some books, uh, two books, sorry, that I absolutely hated. That is T is for Tree by Greg Fowler, which in America, I believe, is... Uh, it's called Jam Sandwiches, it's original title, and Moby Dick, uh, yes, Herman Melville. The, this is probably the worst classic book I have ever read. It made my stomach turn. I hated the style it was written in. I cheered when the whale won in the end, and that is no spoiler because everybody knows the end of Moby Dick. Moby, Moby Dick. Like everyone believes they know the first line of Moby Dick, but it's not actually the first line because that is not the first chapter of the book, if you know that line that I'm talking about. It was just god awful this book and i was so glad when i finished it and tears for tree was just terrible I, I i couldn't get my head around how people do such horrible things and have no comeuppance it was just a, a weird weird narrative and i just i couldn't get my head around uh, uh, how people were like praising this book for being so amazing due to what happened so tears for tree by greg fowler automatically going in there okay then these other ones i enjoyed 
but again this is just completely for room purposes um in my bookcase says so alice by christina henry which i read i think two years ago now or more um which is a dark spin on the alice in wonderland story i really appreciate christina henry and what she was doing and she's done this with other books i've seen like she's done ones for like peter pan and the little mermaid and um sleeping beauty and stuff like that i really think it's great what she does but yeah i enjoyed alice but not enough to read it again um anytime soon everything everything was just okay as a young adult fiction book nothing special um so yeah nick leon who wrote it um i'm sure you know she's a very talented writer but the actual story and what happens not much actually happens so it's gotta go now a short story book i absolutely loved it is the beginning of the world in the middle of the night by jen campbell i'm actually sitting here right now i'm actually debating if i should actually give this away and it's signed by her as well it's signed by her and you know what i'm actually i i told myself i wasn't going to do this but i am going to do it because looking at all the other books that are left definitely they have to go but this is the one where i'm actually this is the first one going through this bag where i'm debating if i should keep it and i think i should keep it you know why i'm gonna keep it <laughs> I put it in there because I was thinking, will I read it again? But then it's it's short stories and the way that she writes them is very beautiful. I put that in the bag because of space. But that is actually a really thin book. And I think now that I've got a whole shelf free, I can sacrifice a thin space on that shelf. OK, that one's going back. See, the, this is, it's actually kind of good that I've done this video so that I, else I would have given that away, that signed copy of that book away and I would have missed it probably on my bookshelf. Next, a really great book I'd recommend, The C Word um, by Lisa Lynch. Now, Lisa Lynch was a woman who set up a blog um, after she got diagnosed with breast cancer, which it took a while, but it went kind of viral and she became extremely popular talking about her experiences with cancer. And this is a book of her blog entries, which was published, uh, I think, not long after her death. Um, sadly, she, she, she beat cancer and sadly it came back um and uh, she passed away uh after the the second load of treatments and such um but it's so poignant and so funny and so brutally true um they did a bbc um drama of it with sheridan smith which is what this cover is actually the, the poster for um which i would really recommend you watching the c word uh, if you're able to get hold of a copy of it the drama was fantastic um but it's so funny and honest and sad and happy and joyous for life um i really recommend lisa lynch but i just literally i'm making space guys and if this helps by giving this in charity just like with period if it helps a woman um to read his books and learn stuff and um if it helps them by me donating its charity then i'm doing something right so c word then we have Dunkirk and Me Before You. So Dunkirk by Joshua Levine. I think this is a really strong non-fiction uh, book telling about the, the history of Dunkirk and what happened. Um, I read this after seeing the film as the film, this is the poster from the film. Um, and I found it fascinating to read. I'm glad that I read it because even though they did well displaying, telling the story in the film Dunkirk, there's so much more to it than what you see um which i really enjoyed learning the, the history of by reading that book um but i'm gonna read it again soon no and me before you by jojo uh, jojo moids now i got this because my sister read the book um i can't remember if it was right before or right after the film came out but she she read the book and she was like you really have to read this it is so good and I really thoroughly enjoyed the book. And then I saw the film and the film is good. It's a, it's a strong film, but there are elements of the book that they left out. And I was a bit like, why have you done that? That doesn't make sense because you need to know that in order to know why she doesn't leave where she lives and for her story. So I was just a bit like, oh, that's annoying. And it's just sat since um, what the film came out, I think, what, four or five years ago now, I think so yeah this is from what 2012 
uh, was when this was first published and, and it's, yeah, well, well, this version was published. So I probably had it on my bookcase for about five, five, six years or something. And I've never picked it up since I finished it. So it's been on there that long time. It's got to go. Right, last pile, guys. So here we go. I'm going to split into two so I can hold them up to show you. So the first one here, we have The Kite Runner uh, by Khalid Hassini. Now, I really love The Kite Runner. I thought it was a really, really good, strong, strong book. Um, great characters, great story, wonderful storytelling. Um, and I loved it. But I'm not in the mood to read the book anytime, again anytime soon. That's not a negative on the narrative or anything at all, uh, his writing. It's just a case of that I know in my gut that I'm not going to read this book for a very long time. So why am I keeping hold of it? Why am I doing that? So it's, yeah, I'm giving it up for that, those re that reason. Then the next two are Black Eyed Seasons by Julia Hay oh, hey Berlin. <laughs> Just like throw a book at my face in the process. And The Good Fairies of New York um, by it's Martin Miller, isn't it? Yes, Martin Miller. Now, this first one, Black Eyed Seasons, I didn't get along with at all. Um, it came very close this year being on my, my, um, my top five worst um, of the year. It was just, yeah, it was all very odd and didn't get along with it. So that's got to go. And then The Good Fairies in New York was booked last year. Or did I read Black House Seasons last year? I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. Well, that, that, that tells you how likely I am to read it again. If I can't even remember when I read it. Um... The Good Fairies of New York was a book last year where I had originally, the reason why I bought this book was that me picking it up in Waterstones and reading it from time to time, I became intrigued by it. I bought the book. I then started reading the book and I tried like four times to get into it and I couldn't do it. I read the first like 20 pages about four or five times and I just, no, I couldn't get through it. I couldn't get through that barrier. And I said I might keep hold of it and try again separate from this channel and I haven't picked it up separate from this channel so why am i still holding on to it if i haven't picked it up and i've tried four or five times to get into the first like 20 odd pages and i haven't been able to why am i still keeping it it's got to go now the next two are books that i haven't even read so and i've had them for ages so kong school island i got this because uh, as a freebie when i went to oh there's a bookshop in in Birmingham and Forgotten Planet, that's it. Um, I went there for a work day away trip. Well, it was over two days, actually. We stayed overnight and it was down the road from Forbidden Planet, which is a kind of comic um, book kind of shop that spells, sells loads and loads of books, pop vinyl dolls, merchandise from loads and loads of different um, like superhero um harry potter everything you can think of they sell there and i'd never had the opportunity to go and we were where the 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 two days um events were being held was directly across the road from uh forbidden planet so for both days i would rush out at the lunch break the hour-long lunch break and just spend like the whole hour there <laughs> so I could, I could look around and enjoy stuff and i bought a few things and they shoved the copy of um kong skull island in the bag with me this is um the novelization of the the film kong skull island which i've never seen and the book i've never picked it up and it's just sat there because i got given it for free and so is going in the bag um and then the eye of the, uh, the eye of the world by robert jordan now this is a book it's a bloody massive book i got recommend i got recommended this his whole saga there's like i think there's something like 10 books or something um that uh robert jordan wrote he never actually finished them he passed away before he finished them and i think his son then took over finishing off the last book or he wrote the entire last book to finish it off based on the notes and writings of his father um so he's just basically just put the last pieces together and finished it off um but i got recommended this by a work colleague who said i think you'll really really enjoy this this saga i have had this on my bookcase for six maybe seven years sat next to the game of thrones books 
I haven't touched it. It's got to go. And the last two that I have here before we go over to the very last books are Crime and Punishment uh, by Dostoevsky and The Hunt for Andrew Kunan and the Man Who Killed Gianni Versace uh, by Maureen North. Both of these, which I've reviewed on my channel, it was either last year or this year. This was definitely this year. I think Versace was last year. Um, Crime and Punishment. I was so happy when I finished this book. It was kind of like Moby Dick where I was punching the air when I finished it. It's not a bad book. It's just, it's very heavy, very tough to get through. Whereas Moby Dick, I was punching the air because I was like, thank God that's finished because that book is bloody awful. Um, yeah, it's just kind of, crime punishment is a very, very heavy book to get through. So I was like, it's going to go. And for Gianni Versace, uh, Vulgar Favours, I say, sorry, it's Vulgar Favours, The Hunt for Andrew Cunard and the Man Who Killed Gianni Versace. Um, it's a great book. It was a really, really strong book. But um, I kind of feel like I'm glad that I read it. But I'm not interested in reading it again anytime soon. So it's got to go. It's got to go, guys. And now I've got my final six books, final six books that I'm giving away. Well done, guys. What, 31 minutes and we're nearly through. And this is me trying to rush through as fast as I can with these. So the first one is The Charming Man by Marion Keys. I read this a few years ago now and I hated it. Um, the depiction of alcoholism is very strong in this book. Uh, Marion Keys herself um, was an alcoholic for many, many years. She was writing from her own personal um, experiences with alcoholism. But there were other things that the language that she uses in it, which and the things that she says in it, which are just like, whoa, I can't believe you said that. Um, and the narrative just wasn't wasn't strong at all so it's it was a big no for me when I reviewed it and yeah so now that I'm doing a clear out it's going and another one that I really didn't get along with was Children of the Blood and Bone by Tommy Adamini Adam, Adam, I can't speak right now I'm 30 I've spoken non-stop for 32 minutes and I'm getting words my look um this is the first part of a trilogy and I just I didn't like the pace of it I the narrative was just a bit off for me it was just like yeah this is just it's just okay but I said I think it might be a good idea if I get the rest of the because it's the first book in a, a series of books I think it's I think it's a trilogy but it might be more than that I'm not too sure it might be good if I get the others and then read them together but I don't want to buy the others that is the thing that is the reason why it's gone in the bag I would have clung on to it if I was going to get the others and then try and read it again through but I don't want the others, I've decided, so it's got to go. Hex uh, by Thomas Ald Huveld. This was one of the worst books, not the worst book, but one, one of the worst books I read in the past few years on this channel. Um, I just didn't get along with it. It had an interesting premise, but the ending was just a complete cop out for me. And I just I couldn't get along with it whatsoever. So Hex gotta go then Versailles um by Elizabeth Massey this is basically a novelization of the first series of Versailles Versailles I absolutely loved I thought it was a brilliant brilliant drama and so the book because it's just a novelization of what is on the in the drama it, it, it told the story well but at the same time it's just a novelization of the drama they, they didn't it didn't have an oomph factor that made it stand out separate from the um from the tv show itself it was just telling the story written on a page so i'm not going to read this again for sure so sorry elizabeth you gotta go final two Audio by Innocence by Agatha Christie. I know, quite a bit of a shocker that Agatha Christie has made it in the bag uh, to go to charity shop. But Audio by Innocence, out of the books that I have read of hers, and I re and I bought this to reread it when my sister and I were, because um, we did that video about um, Agatha Christie, what, a couple of years ago when we were in Bath now? Oh, God, it's weird. That it was, it, yeah, it, no, oh, no, was it last year, actually, when we did the Agatha Christie one? Anyway, to prepare for that, I because I didn't have a copy of Odia by Incent, I re I got this copy and I reread it. I had read it before, um, 
And yes, yeah, so this was just to prepare for that. And even though Ordeal by Innocence is a good book, out of the Agatha Christie books that I have, it's not, it's probably my least favourite, just out of those ones I have. And I wanted the, the space. So I was like, sorry, Agatha, I'm going to have to sacrifice one of your books. But if somebody enjoys it by having it donated to charity, then so be it. And the final book that I'm donating to charity is Catherine Swineford by Alison Weir. This was this was a good book, um, but it was very confusing because there were so many people in Catherine's life who it, it's just it just so happened that's how it was, where there were so many people who had the exact same name. Um, so she it, it was quite a struggle sometimes to make sure that you the the person like called Betsy or whatever in your mind was the actual Betsy that was being referred to and stuff like that. Um, Catherine had a very interesting life. But I just don't think I would read this book again anytime soon. I just, I don't think I would. Alison Weir is a great writer. I've got, you know, various books of hers, which I have read, which I, and ones that I haven't read, but which I'm going to, which is on my to be read bookcase. Um, but this one, I don't think I would ever read again. So, or, you know, I, I, I would read it because, it's an it's an awesome weird book but right now i don't feel like i'm gonna read it again so yeah so it's Catherine swineford so there we go guys that is all the books that i am donating to charity um to clear my bookcase load of them it's because i didn't like of them there's some of them i have never even read and i have no intention to and, and the majority i i do like i did enjoy but am i likely to read them in the next year or two no so why am i hanging on to them so there we go that's my unhauling of 2020 and now i've got space in my bookcases and my floorboards i'm sure in my study are very thankful that i've shifted a load of these books um off them uh so yeah so now i've got to try and figure out how to get them all back into the bags that i took them out of earlier so I'm going to do that now. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that and you got to see what kind of books I've held on to um, and books that I'm getting rid of and why I'm getting rid of them. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these books. If you if you have any thoughts about them, leave me a comment in the comments box below. I'd love to I'd love to know what your thoughts are. And oh dear, and I've just knocked crime punishment on the floor. How very bad of me. <laughs> um right so yeah so there we go that's the unhauling so now it's moving on to 2021 and what i'm going to be reading so yeah i hope you guys head over there and find out what you can expect for 2021 all right guys bye